My dearly beloved in Christ, today's gospel tells us that story of our Lord curing a paralytic who was unable to walk, lying on his pallet. And our Lord did so by saying, Son, take courage, son, thy sins are forgiven thee. So that would lead us to understand that his paralysis was a punishment for sin. At any rate, the scribes murmured, and they said, who can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sins, which is true. Only God can forgive sins. But we know that he has given that power to his church, and particularly to priests and bishops. As our Lord said to his apostles on the very day of the resurrection, that evening, he appeared in the upper room and breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive and shall forgive, they are forgiven, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. And what gratitude we owe to our Lord for giving to his church this power that he had of forgiving sins. We profess our faith in the forgiveness of sins every time we pray the creed. At the end of the Apostles' Creed, we say, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. So what do we mean when we say, I believe in the forgiveness of sins? Well, I will read to you from the Catechism of the Council of Trent, just a short section that it has on this doctrine. Nor is the exercise of this power limited to particular sins. No crime, however heinous, can be committed or even conceived, which the church has not the power to forgive. Just as there is no sinner, however abandoned, however depraved, who should not confidently hope for pardon, provided he sincerely repent of his past transgressions. Furthermore, the exercise of this power is not restricted to particular times. Whenever the sinner turns from his evil ways, he is not to be rejected, as we learn from the reply of our Savior to the Prince of the Apostles. When St. Peter asked how often we should pardon an offending brother, whether seven times, Jesus replied, not only seven times, but till seventy times, seven times, meaning as often as he is truly sorry for his transgression. And God is so good and merciful and forgiving. But we must be very careful that we do not presume on God's mercy, that we do not use his mercy and forgiveness as a very excuse or justification for offending him more or less thinking, well, I can commit this sin, and then I can always go to confession, and God will forgive. And I say we must be very careful, because sooner or later, God may withdraw his grace, and the person may no longer repent. Because again, all sins can be forgiven as long as the sinner repents. But if the sinner hardens his heart, then he will not seek repentance. And this would be the explanation of those words of our Lord when he said that the sins against the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. Which, by the way, is an implicit proof of purgatory because that implies that there are sins that will be forgiven in the next life, namely venial sins for those who die in the state of grace. But getting back to those words, what does our Lord mean? There are some sins, the sins against the Holy Ghost that will not be forgiven. How does this square with what we just said, that all sins can be forgiven? Well, the answer is that sins against the Holy Ghost blind the person. They harden the heart to such a point that the sinner will not seek forgiveness. His sins could always be forgiven, no matter how great or how heinous, as I just read from the Catechism of the Council of Trent. But the point is there are certain sins which harden the heart, such that the sinner will not seek normally forgiveness. Theologians classify the sins against the Holy Ghost as six in number, and they are despair, 
presumption of God's mercy, resisting the known truth, envy of the spiritual good of another, obstinacy in sin, and final impenitence. So those are sins which of their very nature cause hardness of heart and obstinacy in sin and lead the person to become blinded. We read about the Pharaoh in the Old Testament at the time when the Jewish people, when Moses was telling the, the Pharaoh to let the Hebrews go, to release them. And there were these ten plagues, one after another. And we read that Pharaoh hardened his heart. And even after a plague, he said he would let them go, and then he changed his mind and hardened his heart. That is a terrible state that we must dread, hardness of heart. And it is a result of someone who abuses God's mercy, God's forgiveness. St. Alphonsus Liguri gave a sermon on what he calls the number of sins that God will forgive. And I would like to read portions of it to you. It's also a chapter in the wonderful book, Preparation for Death. And the basic contention here of St. Alphonsus Maria Liguri, a doctor of the church, is that God has fixed for each person the number of sins that he will forgive. And that after that, there will be no more forgiveness. Not because he would not forgive, but because he will withdraw his grace so that the sinner will become hardened in sin and will not seek forgiveness. So let us listen to his words. God, as the apostle says, will have all men to be saved, but he also wishes us all to labor for our own salvation, at least by adopting the means of overcoming our enemies and of obeying him when he calls us to repentance. Sinners hear the calls of God, but they forget them and continue to offend him. But God does not forget them. He numbers the graces which he dispenses, as well as the sins which we commit. Hence, when the time which he has fixed arrives, God deprives us of his graces and begins to inflict chastisement. I intend to show in this discourse that when sins reach a certain number, God pardons no more. St. Basil, St. Jerome, St. John Chrysostom, St. Augustine, and other fathers teach that as God, according to the words of Scripture, thou hast ordered all things in measure and number and weight, has fixed for each person the number of the days of his life and the degrees of health and talent which he will give him, so he has also determined for each the number of sins which he will pardon. And when this number is completed, he will pardon no more. Now, I won't read from this entire sermon, but he quotes numerous quotations from the Old Testament and also some from the New, where God limits the number of times he will pardon. For example, here is a quotation from Amos the prophet. For three crimes of Damascus, and for four, I will not convert it. In other words, there is a number. Here's a quotation from the book of Ecclesiastes. Be not without fear about sin forgiven, and add not sin to sin. In another place, he says that he restrained his vengeance against the Amorites because the number of their sins was not completed. Quote, for as yet the iniquities of the Amorites are not at the full. Genesis chapter 15. Another example that is well known is that of Balthazar. And Balthazar was a king of the Babylonians, a successor, I believe he was the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And he was having a banquet and feasting. And while he and his courtiers and their wives were feasting, they were drinking sacrilegiously from the chalices that Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the temple in Jerusalem when he plundered the temple. And so here they were feasting and drinking from these sacred vessels, and they saw a hand, just the hand, writing on the wall opposite in the chamber, the dining chamber where they were eating. And the king was terrified, and he trembled, seeing the hand write. And there were three words written on the wall, Mane Fechel Fares. 
And he called in all his wise men and asked them to interpret what this handwriting on the wall meant. That's where we get the handwriting is on the wall from this story in the Old Testament. And they couldn't tell him what it meant. And finally someone said, well, what about that Hebrew, Daniel? He can interpret dreams and signs, etc. So they called in Daniel. And Daniel said to the king, Balthazar, he said, I will tell you what it means. And he went on and gave the explanation. But this is what he said regarding the second word, Thachel. He said to the king, thou art weighed in the balance and art found wanting. In other words, again, the number of your sins has been completed. And that very night, their enemies attacked Babylon and the king was killed. And the, um, was the Assyrians, I believe, that took over, or the Persians that took over the kingdom. And so the idea of his sins were numbered. And that's why the hand was writing on the wall. So as I said, St. Alphonsus gives numerous quotations here from the Old Testament showing that God numbers our sins. And when that number is reached, he will then withdraw his grace. So what is that number for us? We don't know. And we must be very careful not to be presumptuous and not to squander the graces that God gives us. The devil when he tempts one to sin, says, fear not. God is merciful. Answer him by saying, what certainty or what probability do I have that if I sin again, God will show mercy or pardon me? Maybe he will withdraw his grace and maybe I will no longer seek his mercy and forgiveness. So let us remember this truth. Be careful to not abuse the wonderful mercy of God And when we reflect upon that wonderful doctrine of our faith, the forgiveness of sins, give thanks to God for the mercy that he has shown you up to this point. But be very careful not to presume on his mercy for the future, but to truly amend our lives and make use of this wonderful forgiveness of God by changing our lives and sinning no more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.